Hello, and welcome to the Bow Hike Podcast. Here we take a slightly unprofessional and certainly unconventional approach to the otherwise serious outdoor podcasting world. We cover a wide variety of outdoors related topics, including big game hunting, bird hunting, fishing, gear and gear reviews, and even hot or controversial topics in the outdoor news world. Our goal is to provide you, the listener, with entertainment as well as educate you on different facets of the outdoor world. We hope to provide information that is able to help you improve yourself as an outdoors man or outdoors woman and help you hone the skills you already possess. So whether you're a veteran outdoorsman or you're brand new to the game, we want to help you turn that bow hike into a successful bow hunt. So thank you for tuning into the Bow Hike Podcast. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey guys, so just in time for uh, elk hunting and mule deer hunting season to start. Today's episode is with Dylan Dowson uh, from Onyx Maps. Dylan uh, handles the community people, folks like myself and folks like you coming to him with some questions as well as putting out videos and content um, regarding new map layers and updates and stuff like that and just teaching you how to use the product. Um, so we cover a few different scouting tactics that you guys can use. Uh, to better utilize all of Onyx's capabilities. Um, Dylan kind of runs us through some of the new layers and some of the updates that Onyx has made and maybe a little insight into some of the future updates and possibilities uh, that could be around the corner with Onyx. So we, uh, we cover a bunch of questions that I had um, and the questions of the listeners that I could remember. I lost the uh, list of those questions right before the podcast, so that was a very inopportune time to lose something. Anyhow, um, yeah, we just deliver a little bit of extra insight into this, and heads up guys, uh, there will be a giveaway of a couple of premium Onyx Maps memberships, so it'll be a year's worth uh, of Onyx Maps subscription for free. All you're gonna have to do, uh, once it gets posted, is you have to follow uh, my Instagram, which is at the Bow Hike Podcast. You'll follow Onyx Maps, and then you'll comment uh, two of your buddies, tag them in the post that I put up about the giveaway, and you'll get an extra entry if you are already following or are already subscribed to or subscribe to the podcast. Um, and also if you leave a review with a comment. Uh, be it one star, five stars, three, whatever, you'll get an extra entry and we'll do those giveaways. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. And uh, with no further, here's Dylan Dowson of Onyx Maps. Hope you enjoy this episode, guys. All righty. So we're recording now. I've got uh, Dylan. Is it Dowson? Dawson? Yep, Dowson. All right, got Dylan that, Dowson first time. From, uh, from Onyx Maps. I know when I was saying your name, I was like talking to a buddy. I'm, yeah, I'm having this guy from Onyx. It, is Dawson Dowson? I'm not sure. So yeah, Dylan Dowson from Onyx Maps. Uh, he was kind enough to join us today and give you guys the, uh, I'm going to call it the panic season, the two weeks before elk season, the uh, panic season rundown on Onyx and uh, kick it off with, if you don't have it, just pause the podcast and go get it. Um, you're going to want it. So Dylan, how's, how's it going, man? It's going good. Um, yeah, I'm kind of in the not really panic. I, I've been preparing all year long, but it always seems to be a panic two weeks before. So yeah. um, we actually have our antelope archery opener here in Montana opening up in like three days. <laughs> um, so I'm after work tonight, I'll be packing for that first trip and then it'll bump right into elk. So like you said, kind of panic season. <laughs> yeah, man, it always seems like right when you're getting ready for the season to start, you end up something goes wrong. And uh, for me, it was my, my bow. I'm, I'm now known, I haven't let this out yet, I'm now known as the backyard shooter in, uh, in town by the local PD. Because, uh, <laughs> I had my rest malfunction and kick an arrow. Well, I had no clue where. Um, apparently, yeah. my, my neighbor uh, found Got it in it. the yard. So, yeah, I met an uh, officer yesterday at the bow range, and he was like, oh, you're the backyard shooter. I'm like, yeah, it's me. So, yep, yeah, like, it can happen. I told the cop I wanted to have him on the podcast and we'll call it the backyard shooter episode, but <laughs> seemed too into it. So <laughs> maybe he'll know, come but, around. Yeah. So I just had a new string put on, just got my bow back last night and I was out, like I told you broadhead tuning before this. So it's panic mode, man. Yeah. I mean, not for, not for where I'm going or what I'm looking for, but it always seems like no matter how 
how much you prepare before you're uh, the, the two weeks before you're like, crap, where's my headlamp? Yep. No, <laughs> it's the same with me. It's like you said, you know, it happens once a year. We know when it is every season and still a couple weeks out. It's like, Oh, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. So, procrastinating. I'm looking forward to it though. Yeah. Procrastinating is nature. So what do you got going on? Antelope elk? Is that it? Yep. So pretty much just all Montana this year, um, mm -hmm. bought some out of state points, but I was born and raised in Montana and then fortunate enough, for working for Onyx still here in Montana. Um, Onyx is out of Missoula, Montana, so Western Monta Montana, and I'm from Eastern originally. Uh, so definitely a completely change of landscape, scenery. Uh, the hunting's way different from one end of the state to the other. But um, yeah, so Montana, like I said, uh, today's Monday, so uh, Thursday is actually our antelope opener. Um, so that's kind of a statewide tag, and we've got a couple trips for that lined up, and then um, yeah, our trail starts the 7th this year, so cool. bump right into there, and then mule deer following that, and still have a bear tag, I didn't fill it this spring, so got fall bear, and all sorts of different tags to fill. Sweet, man, ends up being a free-for-all once your season's yeah. kind of closed down, you're trying to figure out how to still hunt, so yep. Uh, yep. how'd you get your hunting start, were you raised up hunting, you kind of get into it yourself, or? Yeah, so my dad kind of introduced me to hunting at a super young age. Um, I was his first boy and the first one of his kids that was interested in going out and walking through the woods with him. So um, I think by like four and five, definitely by five, I was out traipsing through the hills in eastern Montana with him. Um, so that was super cool getting brought up that way. You know, I started hunting when I was 12, you know, when you were able to first time here in Montana. So um, hunting, fishing, you know, Primarily hunting is what I've been into, mm -hmm. uh, Western big game, so. Sweet. And uh, what is it that you do for Onyx? Um, so right now I'm the community coordinator. Um, I started four years ago as a customer service agent. So I was the one taking the phone calls, helping people through the uh, panic season and <laughs> into hunting season when people were getting it mid-season, trying to get it all figured out. So um, started out in customer service and now I'm more on the marketing side of things. So. I work a lot with our social media that we do at Onyx, um, a lot of our influencers throughout the country, as well as just day-to-day -day marketing uh, duties there. Right on. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was curious who I was supposed to talk to to get something like this set up. So I just went through the business inquiry yeah. and bang, there's Dylan. Yep, handle those as well. So <laughs> yeah, That's cool. Is that one of the more, I don't know, fun parts of the of the job is just handling people or? I think so. Um, I really like talking with different hunters and people who use the product and just really interesting to get people's perspectives and like how different applications for the product and even in the hunting you know you and I having on x you might use it completely different than I do and whatnot so um, I personally I really like that side of things so yeah I, I probably don't use it as efficiently as you do which is what we're gonna try and get into here eventually it's it seems yep. like every time i pick the dang thing up i find something new i'm like how cool is that i could change the color of my pins yep mm -hmm. happens all the time and it's one thing too with us constantly changing and updating and you know a lot of technology coming out now that allows us to do cool new things like that you know it's a constant reminder and you know constant grind to keep everybody informed and we try and do that a lot with like our social media mm -hmm. uh, and if it Q page but there's a lot to it especially for someone who picks it up during panic season two weeks before elk and you know puts it away after hunting season it's different for me because it's always in my hand so right yeah it's understandable yeah I try and use it year-round in Oregon I mean it's pretty good you know like spring bear opens pretty early April 1st and so I'm always a few weeks before spring bear playing around on it but I use it waterfowl hunting stuff even just like access points into fields that we hunt and stuff like that just mostly marking it to share with people that you're going to hunt with and that's kind of a cool thing to be able to do so yeah um, definitely that's something that's relatively new um you know sharing the waypoints yeah um so i'm sure we'll get into that but we we're also working on a lot of improvements and new sharing capabilities as well so yeah that, so it, it'll certainly be fun to out. certainly be fun to run through what's coming and, and what's already there and what's new for the year so i know i started using onyx maybe heck, I don't know, maybe three years ago or so when it, when it, for, when you guys first started promoting it for, um, the cell phones, because I had, yeah. I had almost bought a, G, or I had bought a GPS, or I think my parents had bought it for me for Christmas. I was starting to hunt a lot on my own. I wasn't raised hunting. Um, and I was starting to go out a lot and they're like, here, we bought you this so you don't get lost. And this was like, I don't know, I, 
I had a smartphone, but it wasn't uh, what they are now. Yep. And um, yeah, they bought me that GPS. And then I heard about these chips and I was like, well, dang, I got to get one of those. And uh, yeah, I didn't have a spot for the chips. So I was pissed. I was like, Gosh, <laughs> yeah. dang it. So I was going to sell it and buy one that had the, the chip in it. And uh, yeah, I ended up, um, that's when you guys really started pumping the, the uh, social media stuff about being able to use it on your phone. That was only maybe two or three years ago. Yeah. So I, you know, kind of the same as you, I had a GPS for a while. Um, luckily mine did have the chip spot. So um, few, I think it was two or three years before I started working here um, is when I picked up the chip and plugged it into the GPS and it was like an aha moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I was born and raised, like I said, Eastern Montana, pretty much thought that we knew everywhere we went, you know, what was public, who owned what private, where we could access, where we couldn't. Um, and then even just setting that thing on the dash as we were driving down county roads that we thought we knew all that information and data. Um, you know, we were passing big chunks of state and BLM that we had no idea. We just always assumed we were private um, or leased up or what have you there. So it was kind of like I said, a aha moment there. Um, and since then, you know, I think I sold my GPS like three years ago uh -huh. um, and I've solely relied on the app since then. So it kind of just got to a point where we were making so many fast improvements with the app and with the technology on the phones um, that the GPS just kind of became a paperweight for me. Um, I would take it in my pack expecting to maybe have to fall back and rely on it here and there. And it just didn't even get turned on for a couple of seasons in a row. So ended up selling that and just relying on the phone now. Yeah. I think, I think my, uh, my screen stopped working, but my voice is still here. So have my Perfect. phone back on in a little bit, but uh, okay. yeah, that's, that's uh, it seems to be the going thing. I see GPS is for sale on people's uh, Instagrams and stuff all the time. Um, do you, you, so you don't carry any sort of backup. You're just like, well, if my phone breaks, I'm hosed. Yeah, and so I'm kind of fortunate in the sense that I have a work phone and my phone, so I kind of have a backup in that regard. Uh -huh. um, but no, I mean, like I said, I carried it for a couple of years with that, you know, a backup, and it's always smart. You know, I, I definitely understand. If I were to go get a GPS as a backup, I would go get a small, lightweight, little, like, e tracks that the chip would work in. Um, before I was rolling around with a, a Garmin Montana, which is a big, heavy, bulky unit, um, so it just was adding weight to my pack that I wasn't needing. So, um, you know, it's never not, it's never a bad idea to have a backup, but I sure haven't needed one. Um, yeah. the one thing that I do carry around for sure now is like a little battery pack. Um, a lot of guys are doing little solar panel chargers for their phones. Um, but if I'm gone for more than two days at a time, I definitely make sure I carry like a, either like a RAV power or I th Amazon sells a ton of different models too yeah. so just to yeah. charge up my phone for sure yeah that's the same exact thing i do is just bring one of those little chargers if i'm not coming back to the truck every night or something and um works out great for me so yep. i uh i do the same thing and i it's sometimes you think about it but it, but i only think about it when somebody's like well what if your phone dies i'm like well what if your gps breaks yeah you know, like yeah. it's the same thing it's i think it's everybody wanting to rag on one thing or the other so it's like well yeah. i use a gps because what if my phone breaks I'm like, well, what if your GPS breaks? That's a, you know. Exactly. So, okay. Same thing. And I know when I was carrying around that GPS, um, a lot of the times I'd forget spare batteries. And that's, uh -huh. I mean, that's kind of the exact same boat there. You know, my GPS would die mid hunt and I would go dig through my pack for my spare batteries that were still sitting at home in the, the cupboard. So <laughs> kind of the same situation there. Yeah. So what's your, um, if we're diving right into this, if you're going to say, uh, I mean, this year you're hunting Montana and it's funny how you think like, well, this is, this, this would be great if I had an out of state tag. Um, and that's what I think a lot of people think of it. Like, well, if I'm going to mm -hmm. hunt out of state, then I'll get this mapping system. But just like you said, um, you use it all the time to know, uh, where you're at and even the same area you hunt every year. You're man, it, it seems like every five or 10 minutes I'm stopping and I'm looking at a map and I'm looking at a drainage or I'm looking at a property line, especially in, in Oregon on the coast here. It's, uh, it's very uh, modeled between like BLM and uh, some state access lands and then a ton of private timber lands. And, you know, during elk season, which is fire season, um, mm -hmm. you have to know certain timber companies let you on their land in a level two fire danger, certain are a level three, um, certain you can't even touch with a, with your foot, let alone your rig, you can't drive through their place. So 
I use it a ton to be like, well, is this Roseburg Forest Products property or is this, you know, Warehousers or is this Seneca Jones or whatever? Um, I use it a lot for that and just uh, I mark a lot of intersections on roads where, you know, it makes it easier for me to, to get to the same spot that I was just in before and mark all kinds of places. So it's, it's yeah. almost like I used to think, oh, I'm only going to use this, you know, if it's somewhere I haven't gone. And now it's yeah. like the places that I hunt the most, I use it way more than I ever would have thought I do. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many different use cases, but even for the simple standpoint of private and public, mm -hmm. um, I know here in Montana, like, especially if I'm driving through an area that I kind of know or I'm familiar with, or at least like, I know where my destination is. And once I get to that trailhead, I, you know, I've done that hike several times. I know it's public, et cetera. Um, so many opportunities or missed opportunities just driving to and from that trailhead or throughout a different um, unit that you're not really familiar with. So kind of this week on an antelope hunt, a lot of what we do is kind of cover a lot of country, whether it be with boots or with the pickup and just glassing up antelope, trying to get um, a good sense of where they're at before we get out and try and put stocks on. Um, but a lot of that happens in country that you know, I'm not super familiar with or that I go to maybe once a year to do this antelope hunt. Um, so, I mean, you can be driving down the interstate. I've done this before, driving down the interstate even, look over and see a nice mule deer buck or see some antelope out there and pull over, pull up the app right away. And within a second, you can know exactly who owns that property, if it's public, um, you know, if it's by chance like a block management or an access yes area um, where it's actually private property but they allow hunting etc so i mean just for the simple standpoint of private and public land without anything else um you know i i pretty much only hunt montana um i'm fortunate enough to tag along on some out-of-state hunts but pretty much only hunt montana um i've lived here for 27 years now and i still use it on every single outing and trip so yeah i think like you said there it's a there's a common misconception of well i only hunt my state so it's not something i need mm -hmm. um you know, there's there's a ton of information. You know, you touched on the fire data. Well, during the uh, during the hunting season, we have like a current wildfire and a yeah. historic wildfire. And I mean, all year, but the current wildfire layer is primarily during the hunting season when the fire seasons are going. Um, we update that almost daily. Mm -hmm. So if there's any fires in the area, you can hop on the app or on the web and see like the expansion of that fire, see where that fire is currently at, see how, you know, how many acres it is. Um, a lot of the times that I've had to, this year we've been fortunate and it's been a really good fire season so far. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but I've had to pivot and hunt a completely different unit uh, before because most of my unit was on fire or the smoke was so bad you couldn't glass up across the basement. Um, so yeah, the, the fire layers come in handy a lot during season and then for the scouting and prep, you know, figuring out what units you want to apply for, um, or if you just want to go hunt like a burn area for elk, you know, we've got historic wildfire data as well. So if you turn that layer on it and right in the app, all of the historic wildfires uh, pop up. I think starting in like 2005 or so. Um, and so it'll show you exactly what burned, exactly the year it burned, and you can look at that as well as like the pro public, private, and all our other layers to see how you can get it in there. So um, yeah. yeah, there's there's a ton of different uses, you know, even the trails alone, a lot of the times I'm using it just to find trail access um, into an area. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that fire, uh, funny, I was just working on a fire um, actually down here, just local to the house. And it's a place I've got a couple of trail cameras at too. Mm -hmm. And this place starts burning and I'm like, gosh, dang it. There's a few hundred dollars down the drain. So I'm watching the, uh, cause you know, they give you a map every morning that has the fire on it, but it's yep. just kind of like, um, like it just shows the, the, you know, this is BLM, this is private timber, et cetera. It's not a detailed satellite map. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Onyx every day, trying to figure out, zooming in on stuff. Like, is my trail camera going to burn or is it not? Like, so I was, I was playing with that all year and it was great to watch the updates on it. Cause I haven't really ever, um, used it for that purpose before, but it's certainly handy to have. So uh, yeah, definitely. And even that too, you know, marking waypoints for your trail cameras, or you know, I've got way too many waypoints personally, but yeah. um, hundreds of waypoints. You know, every wallow I stumble across, that's good. I'll mark a waypoint. Definitely mark a waypoint at my truck um, when I leave in the morning. 
you know, marking those trail, trail camera locations and putting notes in there, you know, trail camera number two over wallow, um, just to have those locations marked um, and then tracking yourself. So a lot of the times too, um, thinking back to like spring bear season, a lot of the places that we bear hunt is really like rugged, steep, nasty country over here. Um, and so during the daylight, if we're going into an area, like I'll just mark, I'll start a track, find the best route in there, and then hiking out, I can follow that track. Yeah. And no, I'm not going to end up in the bottom of a drainage that I don't want to be in or um, cliffed out or any, anything like that. So, um, you know, waypoints and tracks are definitely underutilized pieces of Onyx too. Yeah, I use my map tools far too little. I use a map a lot and and uh, and always, you know, I'm constantly updating my location to where I'm the mm -hmm. blue dot. Um, but I just this year started using the waypoints and the and the tracking a lot more and and it's certainly a, a cool feature. So what's uh what's some of the newer features that maybe people aren't familiar with in the past year or so that are that are coming out that are have been useful to you? Um yeah, so I mean, a few of them we're constantly changing. You know, like mm -hmm. I said, with technology um, getting improved so much, even week to week, we're constantly coming up with new things. But a few recent ones um, that's kind of along the lines of those waypoints are sharing. So if you and I were going to meet in Idaho at some random trailhead that you have never been at, I could go and mark a waypoint and then tap on that waypoint and share it with you. So I could send that link to you. Um, and basically you tap on that link and it opens up right into your app and drops that waypoint right into your app as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whether it be like a meetup spot or safety reasons, you know, sharing it with loved ones, hey, I'll be in this general area this weekend if you're going by yourself. Um, it's just, it's came in handy a lot. I know last year for me, I was fortunate enough to fill the freezer with like a late season cow hunt and it was me and a buddy, um, that we're up doing this cow hunt and shot a cow was successful right before dark, really bad storm came in. And one of my other buddies, Zach, who works here at Onyx as well was close by. So I actually got some service and was able to send him a waypoint to where we were at. And instead of having to uh, make multiple trips in the dark, you know, he was able to hike with a headlamp in right to where we were um, to help us with the pack out. So, I mean, it's, that kind of stuff is, has been a game changer for me. Another big one with waypoints too is we recently um, changed it so you can set different colors for waypoints. Mm -hmm. um, so everything used to be red waypoints before, which is fine. Um, but for certain situations, you know, I'm elk hunting and deer hunting a lot in the same areas. So it will be really nice to either coordinate my waypoints by color, color coordinate those by like elk or deer you know, even early season, late season rut, if people want to do that. Um, you know, I've been, for this antelope pump coming up, I've been marking all the water sources that I can find on my maps and just turning those waypoints blue. So mm -hmm. just quickly I can, you know, see where the water's at. So that's a cool one. We've added a ton of new icons. Um, and then the sharing, you know, it's something we're constantly going to be improving on. Um, and we've got some updates kind of around the corner, not exactly sure when they're going to come out, but I'm personally really excited for those updates when they do get released mm -hmm. nothing you can touch on on what those are going to be um you're going to be able to share a lot more information and it's going to come over a lot detailed it's about a lot more detailed is about the gist of what i can say there but cool um yeah i'm excited for that and then the other really big one for for kind of a recent upgrade is wind and weather within the app um so now you know we we pull wind and weather data right through the app so instead of looking at an area and then backing out, going into a different app to check what the weather forecast is gonna be for that. I can just look at it right in the app. So that's kind of another one that's uh, a lot of people probably don't realize or fully use, but it is in there now. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. So now I'm gonna be playing with that, trying to figure yeah. it out. It, it yeah. would have been nice to know the other day when I was fogged out for three hours trying to bear hunt, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> crazy, crazy thunderstorm we got an inch of rain and eight hours in oh, August. Wow. and uh yeah just sitting in a rainstorm napping in the bed of my truck waiting for the fog to clear out so that's yep. uh, that's a doozy but yeah it, it seems like uh you guys I, I always get emails for updates and and stuff and it seems like i always log in and i can never figure out what the new layers are but uh the new color thing was great um 
are you able to edit so your existing points now are you going to be able to edit those and change the color or can you just change the icon um so you can actually do that right now so if you tap okay. on an existing point and hit the three bars and edit then you can change the icon like i said we've added a, a ton of new icons um which we got from feedback from all all of our customers and we sent out some surveys and whatnot so we got some great feedback there um added a, a bunch of cool new waypoint icons you can change the color you can put notes in there um so on and so forth so yeah i'm kind of going through the process of slowly updating my icons to different colors and whatnot um like i said i've got way too many so i need to go in and clean some of those out and change and color coordinate and uh some of that will be for to help prep for the season too yeah, I started using uh, like purple the other day. I picked the most random color I could just to start using for uh, all the places that are that are gates that I like to yep. park at and walk or ride a bike past or whatever. So started using all those, all the purple ones for that, um, for like gates and road intersections. Mm -hmm. So I know it's got to do with travel. And then uh, all my existing points now are red, but I started, uh, went through and, and uh, marked some possible campsites where we're hunting this year in like a teal color just so that it's super easy to distinguish when you're sliding around on the map, looking at units. Um, you can just, right when you see that, those blue waypoints, you're like, oh, those are the campsites we were picking out and zoom right in yeah. on them. Um, yeah, for sure. Where, I really started to love is that roadless layer. Um, the, the thing that pissed me off for a while is I couldn't figure out how to turn down the opacity of that layer. <laughs> Once I figured that out, it makes it way easier. I just wish that you could, uh, you could zoom in on that with it roadless and still see the satellite map a little yeah, clearer. Than that layer is kind of one, and we get a lot of phone calls about that um, where people accidentally turn it on and don't realize it's on. Because oh. <laughs> as you said, when you're zoomed in, we get a few phone calls of my map is purple and I can't see anything. So that one's kind of like a, how I've learned how to use that layer is you know zoom out to your area you want to check out and turn it on and then kind of sometimes I'll mark some waypoints where like it's really shows a highlighted roadless area and then I'll turn it off and zoom back in but yeah I uh, I know what you're talking about there once you zoom in that layer kind of overtakes your map a little bit yeah I just eyeball it and then go back in and zoom in and, and mark yep. some stuff up so so if you're gonna go I know you say you mostly hunt Montana um, but I'm sure you get this question a lot so so say me if I was gonna come and hunt Montana and I didn't know anything about it um, and I was going to come and scout there, or, you know, I wanted to e-scout, say, for an elk hunting trip mm -hmm. and uh, never having stepped foot in the mountains that I want to hunt. Um, kind of run me through what a process would be. Um, say, I mean, what are you looking for when you're looking for, for a, a location to hunt elk? So kind of for the guy that, whether it's his first time out to hunt um, big game or, or even, you know, he's been doing it for years, but he's changing areas or the area he's in got privatized or something like that. What's, what's kind of the process you'd go through for elk? Um, and then what are the differences between like you're looking for an elk hunting spot and a deer hunting spot in the fall? Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, I would say along with the app, um, people get access to our web map, which basically you go to our website, log in um, with your same credentials, your email and password, and then you're able to view the map right on your computer so mm -hmm. a lot of the times um, what I'll be doing is scouting on my computer just it's a lot bigger screen it's a lot easier obviously to navigate around and then if I mark waypoints or areas of interest any any of those uh, map tools on my computer they automatically transfer to my phone so I mean I would say definitely do this e-scouting on your computer it's just a lot easier than looking at your phone and zooming in and zooming out, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, even at the office, sometimes I'll plug my computer into a big screen TV and look at it from a really <laughs> big view. So, um, but no, so I mean, as far as like coming to a new state, um, you know, we, we do show all, Onyx does show all of the game management units. A lot of the states like Montana, obviously there's a lot of units that you can't over the counter hunt elk in, so you're gonna have to apply. Um, so a lot of times what people do is start by pulling up all those game management units and going in and even putting like a waypoint on them, which ones are public or over the counter opportunities with that tag. Um, and then just kind of diving in from there. One of the probably most utilized layers for scouting for elk specifically would be that um, historic wildfire layer, as we 
touched on a little bit ago and uh, kind of how that one and the roadless area, you know, got started. Definitely the roadless area is Randy Newberg was kind of talking with us um, and he was going through this old school way of basically printing out a map of ours and then highlighting where all the roads were and like kind of giving it a buffer zone um, and then finding those areas that weren't in his buffer zone from roads and that's where he was going to focus on kind of the more roadless areas so once he kind of showed us how he was going about doing that um, we just took it upon ourselves and worked with him in creating that layer so um, a lot of the times people are looking for areas away from roads away from a lot of the the public so Turning that layer on in conjunction with the historic wildfire layer, um, you know, getting an area that was burned maybe three, four years ago, a lot of new growth, um, great elk habitat, looking for water, et cetera. So, you know, it, it's really, it kind of just boils down to what people are looking for. You know, are you looking for like a backpack style hunt where you put your camp on your back and you're gone for five to seven days? Are you looking to car camp? You know, what's your... Um, availability as far as like how far can you or are you willing to hike um, a lot of times I'm hunting elk by myself so I try not to get too far off the beaten path to where if I kill a bull you know five six seven miles from any pickup or help you know that's probably not a good situation to be in in September when it's hot right. out right um, but yeah I mean as far as resources goes you know we work a lot with Randy Newberg and he has a great um scouting series actually on youtube and on our on x youtube where he walks people through like an entire scouting plan from you know picking out the new unit like you said to honing in where you want to check out you know areas of interest and then boots on the ground so he does a great job at that and then the we were also work with the hunting public guys um they kind of did the the exact same thing but for mapping whitetail hunting mm -hmm. um so that's another really good resource and that kind of dies a little bit farther into you know what exactly to look for in those burn units or avalanche slides or just different areas of transition um, water cover food you know the whole nine yards there so I definitely would recommend people to go check those out for a lot more like in-depth detail right and so um, I wonder this too because a lot of times you'll you'll this is sort of off topic but mm -hmm. uh, I just thought about it how uh, often do you guys update the satellite images? Is it like a constantly updating thing or is it a once a year? Or? So it's hard to give like a good answer on that one just because some areas um, the satellite is updated yearly. Some areas that are in far less interest, satellites not updated for several years. Um, as far as like the data goes, as far as like the private public land um, you know, the opportunities for private that are open for uh, public hunting, game management units, trails, roads, all that data we update at least once a year per state. Mm -hmm. um, the imagery is just, it, it's tough. You know, some areas might be updated once a year. Some areas might be five years out of date. Um, so that one just, it really depends on when that information is actually being updated from our source. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that I was I was kind of curious about just simply mm -hmm. because you you look um, for instance uh, around here at least it's hard to find a place without a road because uh, yep. there's so much logging on the coast and it's I mean it's pretty steep nasty ground so it's hard to find um, anything without a road mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of times I try to zoom in and see maybe there's maybe there's a ditch that's not marked on the map that you can't actually drive in there but you could walk in there. Um, or maybe there's windfall all over the road and it's not going to get cut out because they're not logging it or there's a slide or something like that. And so that was my curiosity was yeah. how often that gets updated um, so that you can zoom in on that stuff and, uh, and be able to, to get a better look at it. And is there anything in the works to clear up images when you zoom in? Um, so again, that's kind of the same like our, our source provider for that data. We're always working um, with them to try and get the next updates and the clearest images possible. So I would say to answer your question, yes, um, as far as like a timeline and exactly what that's going to entail. Um, I don't quite know 100% on that, but yeah, I mean, something we, we really are looking into because I completely agree with you, you know, sometimes, especially when a fire comes through an area, um, you know, from the aerial view, it'd be great to see that, you know, right away for the next season. So 
something we're always working on getting the next best latest upgrade but uh right now it's you know kind of what we're working with is what we have availability to mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and and it um i mean i'm sure it's it's asking a lot but i'm sure it would be nice someday if it was like you knew what time of year the satellite photo was taken to because you'll look yep. at stuff and you're like oh well there's a pond there and you know the sun shining but that could be april <laughs> or it could be september so then yep. you go you know and that's where the it, it's nice when you're looking at something that's local because you can go check that out after right you can drop a pin drive over there look at it but when it comes to you're driving six or eight hours from the house and you can't just do a, a cannonball a scouting trip and just yep. shoot right over there check it out and be like oh guess it wasn't a pond turn around head back home you know it's, yeah definitely it's a five minute drive so. you know i kind of running into that with this antelope hunt in a few days um you know i've probably got 30 plus water sources uh marked and one of my plans as soon as i get down there is to go check out like the the five that i'm most interested in and just see which ones are actually water you know mm -hmm. i don't know for sure if that was images taken of water last year two years ago you know if uh somebody who is leasing blm for their um cattle and had a big stock tank full of water on the blm if they since have not leased cattle so no i uh I definitely hear you there and hopefully we can work on some stuff in the future and more of that information is more readily available. And then we can definitely look at providing that. Yeah. You guys are, I mean, just in the past two or three years, the growth factor has got to be crazy enough that you got these questions I'm asking can't be anything new. No, definitely not. I mean, and yeah, I remember when I was in customer service even, and I know we still get the same kind of phone calls of, you know, Hey, I, updated my house and put a new deck on my backyard two months ago how come it's not showing on the imagery in the app so it's you know a little bit of it is on us and we need to just constantly educate people and let them know that um you know the data that we have there is we do rely on other sources to update their data before we can update ours um, unfortunately onyx doesn't have satellites up in the sky taking photos for <laughs> for us um maybe maybe someday <laughs> Yeah, we'll see about that. Um, it's uh, it's a crazy thing. Yeah, our place we bought back in November, and it still shows the old, old land ownership. So that's kind of what I was looking at. I was gonna yep. do my own little study and see how long it took to update at least my area. I figure that's got to cover. I don't know how big the satellite images that it takes are, but it's got to cover a pretty wide area at one time. It's not yeah, just definitely not and zipping over every one square mile taking a photo. No, and then too along with that. So as far as like it showing the older ownership like uh, as far as the private land layer goes mm -hmm. as soon as um your county updates the data and then we update your state then it will get changed so a lot of the times you know depends on when people purchase when the county updates versus when we update so there's a good chance that you know your county has already updated that information that parcel data uh -huh. and next time we go to update oregon um it'll just pull that and automatically update yeah, and I notice a lot too um, with with like uh, when you're looking on a map, there'll be a lot of things that say road barrier or um, or you know stuff like that that mm -hmm. that may have been cleared out and stuff. So um, how do how do you guys gather that sort of data? So if on the map, if it says like road barrier, a lot of times you drive right through that and you don't even see anything. So is that like a like a possible road barrier, or is that like generally a there was for sure something here before and now it's not? Um, you know that that one's kind of tough it just depends on our data source so we've got tons of different sources of data um, a lot of what we have in onyx is some of what we have in onyx is public record public data uh -huh. um, what we do though is just gather all go through all the work of gathering all of it and compiling all of it and then putting it in one easy to read usable interface right um, so that might be some data that we've got from uh, fishing game or U.S. Forest Service, um, where at one point there was a road barrier there. Um, and then kind of the same as updating your private parcel data. As soon as they update that on their end, as soon as we update after that fact, then we'll get that switched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't mean it to sound like I'm over here complaining. It's just things <laughs> no, that no. I'm wondering. And I'm like, yeah, selfishly, good questions. selfishly gathering this information from you now because yeah. that happens all the time. I'm like, well, maybe I can't go around that way because it says it's got a barrier. And then you go to try and drive it and you're like, oh, well, good to go. Yep. So that's yep. one of those. No barrier. So. Yeah. One of those other things that you're trying to 
And I do that a lot over here um, because there are so many roads. When you look on, on a map, especially um, a zoomed out, I mean, in that kind of middle area where it's starting to show little skid roads and four-wheeler trails and stuff like that, mm -hmm. any little two tracks. Um, but if you zoom in on top of where those roads are, a lot of the time there's not even a road. And it was just used to be one, and now it's grown over or stuff like that. So that's where um, I think the, the one-two punch of having – on X and being able to use it from home and then taking it to the field and checking those things out is, is the golden ticket. But yeah, I mean, definitely have to spend time in the field and, and verify and double check. And I mean, there's been times where a lot of the time over here, I just use a uh, topo base map. I mean, the imagery is great for certain cases, but a lot of the times I'm a little bit more concerned with, you know, how steep is the drainage, how much, how many feet of elevation do I have to climb to get up into there, et cetera. <laughs> Um, you know, and there's been times where I plan out this whole long, elaborate three, four day hunt, you know, for my computer and I have exactly where I'm going to camp on day two and, you know, right where I'm going to hike in. And then I get there and I look up at what I, on the map seemed easy to climb up and through, you look up at it and you're like, okay, there's no way there's gotta <laughs> be a better way. So, um, yeah, I mean, definitely boots in the ground and actually getting out there is, is still a need you know for sure but uh you know to mark waypoints um in areas of interest different definitely some travel corridors between areas um and then getting out there and putting those boots on the ground gives you a pretty solid start yeah and for the people that don't know um so obviously with their smartphones most people are like oh yeah no you got to be connected to the internet so what you guys have done then is is uh made a way that we can download a map that references us on the map even when we're offline so um, I think there's three different resolutions right so mm -hmm. I know I have the whole state of Oregon pretty much just blocked out in the big hundred square mile maps that way no matter wherever I go I have a road map is my thought on that yeah um, but that road map as you try to zoom in on it is pretty it's a road map at a hundred square miles pretty much is yeah. what you can use it for um, and then what are the other two sizes? Is it 10 and one or is it five and one? I can't remember. So it's five and 10 besides that. And I do the same thing. So um, to kind of touch on that, you know, for anybody who's not familiar, um, you know, you, you can use Onyx 100% without cell service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty much everywhere I hunt and everywhere a lot of the people here from Onyx hunt, there's no cell service whatsoever. So um, we realized that and built that into the product. But um, yes, yeah, so you've got the five mile map, the 10 mile map and the 150 mile map that you can save. Uh, the 150, as you said, I pretty much have all of Montana saved just so no matter where I'm at, I can at least see the bigger pieces of public land, some private, um, and use it as like a road guidance, um, as well as see, see like the game management hunting unit. So you do that. And then if you save 10 mile maps within there for like the more specific places, that you know you'll be hunting or you plan on checking out, then that will allow you to zoom in on that area of the maps that you saved um, and be able to look at it in greater detail, you know, a lot more clear, crisp aerial imagery. Um, the smaller private parcels will populate their names, et cetera. So mm -hmm. really just kind of depends on, on what you're doing. I personally don't save a lot of five mile maps because I cover quite a bit of country. Um, for somebody using it for whitetail hunting, you know, where they're hunting a, you know, five acre, 10 acre parcel, and they've got a few different tree stands in there, want to see, be able to zoom in and see, you know, a specific bush on the, the aerial imagery map, that kind of stuff. Um, that's where the five mile maps come into play. But uh, personally, I, I'm usually going 150 for a large area and then several 10 mile maps, you know, for possibly the, the game management unit that I'm hunting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's generally what I do too, is I, I know kind of where I'm going to be hunting. And so um, I'll say, well, I'm going to probably hunt this area, but I'll overlap like four of those 10 square mile maps. So I know that yeah. if I'm in that area at all, I'm constantly going to be um, able to, I mean, the 10 for me is plenty. That's me too. like you said, I never, never try and zoom. You can tell if there's a, a pond or something with the, the 10 square mile map, but that was an awesome thing to build in. Is there anything going to be changing with that are you guys going to keep the sizes the same or so for now for the near future the sizes will continue to be the same um you know we would love to add the capability to be able to customize those a little bit yeah. moving forward 
Um, so looking into opportunities there. One thing we recently did add is, so beforehand you had to go in your layers and turn on whichever layers you wanted offline. So for example, if I did not have my private parcel layer and that data on the map when I saved it, offline that, that information would not pull up. So what I personally found myself doing is a lot of times out in the field, I would go to turn on like a historic wildfire layer to see which areas I might be near that I burned that I want to go check out. Um, and I had forgot to save the map with that layer turned on initially. So that was kind of a frustration for a lot of us and some customers. So what we did in a recent update is now when you save a map, it automatically saves every layer that can be saved for offline use. So mm -hmm. that was a, a big improvement there. Yeah, and there's a lot of layers that are obviously included. Um, I'm kind of milling through while we're talking and making sure mm -hmm. to cover all the things that I want to hit. I'm, I'm a shoot from the hip podcast. <laughs> I can't write it all down or I forget it all. So there's some that are just available for your state, right? Like there's state specific layers or those, and those are generally the same. I mean, like, it's going to be Oregon habitat and access, or it's going to be the, the access. Yes. in Montana. So the, generally those differences in state layers are those just going to be whatever your state considers access areas and, and uh, state parks and stuff like that. Yep. Correct. Uh, unit maps of your, of your states. And then are all the hunt layers, are those like a nationwide thing where yep. they're all yep. going to be. So the, the hunt and then the trails and rack layers are nationwide. Okay, and, and kind of some of these, so there used to be you paid for some of these hunt layers, right? Did you guys mm -hmm. demonetize that? Yeah, for the most part we did. There's a lot of layers that, you know, when you buy either a single state membership or an all 50, the elite membership, you know, we just give you all the hunt layers for the nationwide. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of data in there. And then there's also some some free data as well, you know, with just like a free trial. Once that expires, you can still mark waypoints tracks and still get some layers obviously a lot of that like the private and public lands and game management units and a lot of layers are kind of behind that paywall so yeah it's uh certainly and it seems like you guys are always adding or um, um improving on layers and so i always i always end up running the wildfire layer um normally just all the time i just leave it on because when you're scanning across a map you have that on so i normally have have current wildfires historic wildfires and like uh i know there used to be a map where you could look more or maybe it was something else where there used to be uh if you could see springs and guzzlers and stuff like that is that still yep, on so there all those are now baked into the base map so ah. if you, and kind of the easiest base map in my opinion to find those are is the topo base map so mm -hmm. if you turn on topo um a lot of that data we kind of instead of because what was happening is a lot of people weren't turning those layers on, didn't really know they existed, et cetera. Um, and it's such like useful information that we just kind of put them in the base map. Yeah, you just decided like, well, now you have no choice. <laughs> yep, now they're on there, so. Yeah, and the other thing when you're turning on, um, like say government lands, if you have government and private lands on at the same time, um, mm -hmm. you can't zoom through the the government land the the like green or the purple or the yellow marking on there right that you've got to then turn that off to zoom in on the satellite map yep so i mean it's it's transparent enough that you can zoom in and still see what's underneath it obviously mm -hmm. um and we're always working on playing with that transparency so now kind of a recent update is if you're zoomed out it's very obvious blue for state yellow for blm green for mm -hmm. forest um, the more you zoom in on those, if you get really far zoomed in, we automatically just adjust the transparency. Yeah. So the farther down you zoom, the less, you know, blue a chunk of state will, will appear. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if you want, sometimes I'll do that, get out to an area that I know for 20 miles all the way around me is national forest. So I don't really care to look through the green of the national forest. So I'll just go ahead and turn that layer off. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorite, so say you're just going to sit down and, and I know we, we touched on it, but kind of how do you run? What's your run and gun mode? So topo base map and are there any other layers you really run on there or is it just the topo base map and your waypoints? And you, well, your I mean, work already? yeah, I, for the most part, I've always got private public turned on mm -hmm. um, the layers and I, I do use a topo base map. I do switch quite a bit in the field in between uh topo and imagery and then obviously there's that hybrid too to where yeah. the imagery with some topo over it sometimes i'll use that one but 
Um, no, private and public is pretty much always on. Game management hunting units are always on. Um, and then two, what some people don't realize is like Montana, for example, we've got several different units um, based on species. So what you can do is you can go into that GMU layer um, and select like a sub layer. So for this, this week and this weekend, I'll have antelope units turned on, obviously. Um, deer, elk, lion is kind of the, the general one that we default to because that's what most people are using it for is deer and elk. Um, but you can go in there, you know, if you draw a bighorn sheep tag, you can turn on those units. So um, I always have that layer turned on with whatever species, whatever tags in my pocket that I'm trying to fill, um, as well as definitely the trail data layers. Um, a lot of the times what I found is I'll be off, you know, in spring bear hunting, end up in kind of a nasty spot and trying to find the best way back to my pickup or to camp and look at the trails and if I just bump you know 60 feet below me or you know up to the next ridge I can hit a trail and uh, make my life a lot easier so it's just always useful to have on there and then really the other layers I'm just kind of turning on and off as I need so if I want to look at the fire layers go ahead and turn that that on usually I'm not using um, layers like the roadless layer out in the field because a lot of times that's like prep um, mm -hmm. so once I'm out there it's not too big of a concern but sometimes I've turned that on so um, but yeah that's kind of what I typically do each each hunt and each season is kind of like a different use case though so mm -hmm. now is there anything that that uh, has been coming in commonly to you guys like as in a layer that's got a thousand different requests or something significant enough that you guys are actually considering um, adding or taking away anything or anything like that is there is there more new stuff? I know you said there's some changes, but as far as layers go or anything like that? Yeah, layers, not so much. Um, you know, once we added like the roadless and the fire layers and so on and so forth, there there hasn't been a whole lot of requests for different or more data. Mm -hmm. um, what we have had a ton of requests in is like waypoint icons. So yeah, okay. um, that kind of thing to where you know, I'm looking for a squirrel icon and I don't see it, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, people want to get really specific there. So we've, we're constantly taking requests and adding, updating a ton of that there. And as far as the, like the layers, we're going to make sure we keep updating that constantly. And if anything new groundbreaking comes, comes available, we'll definitely put that in. Yeah. And if people are interested in, in, uh, looking into you know if, you, if people have any suggestions or anything like that is it easiest to just email shoot an email over to onyx yeah so help at onyxmaps.com um gets you to one of our several customer service agents that take requests um help people out all day all throughout the season so definitely help at onyxmaps.com mm -hmm. and then our website too just onyxmaps.com um down at the bottom there's also like a faq page it's a great resource for just brushing up on, you know, what's new, what we've came out with, frequent, frequently asked questions, um, tons of videos, tips, tricks, tactics, all sorts of different stuff in there. Cool. And then real quick, do you want to touch on uh, elite versus premium as far as the memberships go? So wh which ones for what guy kind of thing? If I'm just a, I mean, just a dude hunting in Oregon, um, that uh, elite membership is going to be fine, right? Yeah, so I mean, we we have three basic tiers. The first one's just our free basic membership. So everybody, when they start out, get a free seven day trial. All you have to do is just download the app. So go into the app store on your phone, um, search Onyx, Onyx Hunt, Onyx Maps. It'll all pop up, um, and then you download it, start a trial. You get free seven days to make sure it's going to work for you. Um, try it out in your state there, and then after that, we've got a premium and an elite membership. So the premium membership is single state. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I pretty much only hunt Montana. So, you know, I would go ahead and probably be okay with that one until I draw an out of state tag or I tag along with a buddy and want to use it out of state. Um, the elite membership is for all 50s. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the premium membership runs twenty nine ninety nine, so 30 bucks a year. And then the elite membership is a hundred bucks a year. So it uh, you... just kind of depends on what you're doing, how much out of state hunting you're doing. Uh -huh. Can you turn off one state at a time and turn on another one when you're on the premium or is it you pick Oregon and that's all you get? Yeah. So right now it's, you pick Oregon. Um, 
and that's that's kind of the way it's ran so mm -hmm. we're looking at possibility because there's a few guys who have reached out have been there's several guys that have reached out um that have said you know i hunt two states or three states so we're looking at kind of like a in-between opportunity and seeing if we can't roll that out for those like a folks. state by state kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah so what I ended up doing last year was I was using, and, and actually Onyx saved our freaking hunt in New Mexico last year. We, uh, it was like the craziest winter year in like 50 years down there or whatever. Um, and I had done a bunch of scouting at home, but it was kind of an area that, that my cousin knew. Uh, they'd hunted it for six or seven years. Well, the mountain that they normally hunt just got blown with snow. We hunted it the first day and it was just like hip deep drifts and like one fork and horn and two does for the whole six mile loop and now you got like freaking sore hip flexors and whatever else from pounding through the snow so we're like well i know there's some lower country out here but i don't know what's public what's private whatever um and i was just like well let's find some cell service and i'm just gonna punch the tag on this uh elite membership so that was well worth the 70 dollars just to be looking yeah. at the one state right then i mean for it, sure but it would have been nice to to say oh i could just add a state for 10 bucks yeah so that's definitely kind of and you know, kind of to your point there, I mean, for me, I almost don't want to know how much money I spend every year on hunting gear and equipment <laughs> and tags and gas and the whole nine. Um, but, you know, with the amount of money that you're spending just on gas to go check out a new area, um, you know, to be able to know exactly where's private, where's public, where can I go, where can I pivot, um, you know, it's really in the grand scheme of things, it's not, not too too expensive definitely. Oh, it's an automatic for it's yeah. <laughs> an automatic for me and most of the people that I hunt with now I mean uh anymore you know I'll be talking on the phone with a buddy and like oh yeah no I haven't I don't know exactly where you're talking about he's like yeah stand by and just sends me over a waypoint I'm like oh yeah no I know that hole or whatever um it's automatic I don't even yeah it's like uh it's like a cell phone bill or something man I'm just like oh it popped up yeah just renew like yep. 30 dollars are you kidding me that's like yeah. you know, like if, you know gas tank of gas is 80 to 100 bucks and you know i'm burning through a lot of those every season so <laughs> to be able to know where you can stop and save some gas and go hunt on some public and check stuff out it's definitely worth it yeah so i think we covered it up pretty good i had promised people that i would ask their questions for you and then i lost the piece of paper that i wrote all the questions <laughs> on so obviously making it, making it easy on me obviously i'm like the most um squared away podcast host of all time Mm -hmm. so that's uh that's pretty sweet I, I got it dialed in this is this is how you gain stardom right here just, <laughs> basically what I'm getting out of this is onyx is like an onion it's got layers and um, to just get it and not even think about it because it's kind of crazy not to I know there's some other mapping systems that are out there but like onyx is like the uh, taco bell of of uh, fast foods it's always been there for you yeah <laughs> and the free yeah, membership sure. you could just use you just can't use it offline right yeah, so that, and then it also won't show like the private and public after the free seven day trial. Oh, okay. um, you still can mark waypoints and use some basic GPS functionality. Um, you know, a lot of people that are in Canada use it for that, use it as basically a GPS. It just doesn't show, okay, here's the boundaries of this private or public piece and here's what it is. Yeah, um, this is kind of a random, just my own question. So. Mm -hmm. You know, with like, uh, there's like the spot GPSs and that kind of like satellite transmitters that ping you and stuff. Is there any chance of ever having like a help button integrated into Onyx? I personally would love to see it. Um, so right now I've had a spot and then right now I've got a inReach Mini. Yeah, that's what I'm going to buy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really like the inReach Mini personally. Um, I just used it. I was up in BC and used it up there for about a week and it was awesome. Um, but to answer your question... We don't have hard plans right now. It's something we're always looking into. And mm -hmm. like I said, I personally would love to see it. So I'm going to keep bugging our yeah. engineers about it. <laughs> I mean, even just for, not even for like, um, for satellite texting or anything like that, literally yes. just like a, ju just a SOS beacon would yep. be freaking awesome to have in there for the guy that, because I mean, we, you know, an inReach Mini, it's a great thing, but it's $350. And then it's, you know, at least $20 a month or whatever when you want to yep. have it turned on. So just to have it on there and like, if you push it, it's a hundred bucks, you know, something yeah. like that where it's, it doesn't cost you anything. It's integrated in the map. You push that button, it costs you money. Yep. Um, something like that. And then can you, so say, um, I know you were talking about uh, maybe dropping a pin to your loved ones so they know where you're at. Um, 
can you send a waypoint to a free onyx account yeah definitely okay. so that's that's actually a free free feature so i mean if i have a free free account and trial and so do you uh we can still exchange waypoints there. okay because yeah i mean my mother um is never leaving the house to go hunting but if i want to <laughs> you know, send her and my fiance both a, a waypoint, then that's good to know that you can send that to the free ones. So, yep. yeah, yep, I think absolutely. I'm about, uh, I think I'm about run out of questions um, to ask you. I think I, I think I covered all of my selfish, uh, selfish questions, <laughs> but uh, unselfishly, we're going to what give away a membership, um, yes. a, a premium yep. membership. Yep. So um, yeah, however you want to run that and then you can kick over the winner however you choose over to us and we can get them set up with a year of uh, the premium membership. Sweet. So yeah, guys look on the, on the Instagrams um, to make sure you're going to be able to get in that. I think what we'll do is we'll just, if you follow on X maps, you follow the podcast on Instagram and uh, I don't, what's that people on generally just have people tag buddies, right? We got to do something different. That's yeah. We, we can come up with something more clever. Yeah. We'll come up with something clever. I'll put it in the, uh, in the closer, but I think I'm going to let Dylan get back to it. He's got scouting to do. The guy's got a hunt in three days and he doesn't know where his <laughs> headlamp's at. So yeah, no, I know where my headlamp's at, but I don't know about my boots and Dude, everything else. So I buy like three headlamps a year and those things straight up, get up and walk away. I've, I've been good this last couple of years of putting everything. I like to be organized when it comes to hunting, not necessarily day-to-day -day work life, but um, hunting, I, I really like to be organized. So my headlamp, every time I use it and every time I like am done using it, it goes back in the exact same pocket in my pack. No really? matter if my pack's in my garage and I'm using it in my backyard, like I'll, I've gotten through, gone through enough that I just make the extra effort now and put it exactly where it needs to be every single time. So I'm, I'm getting better at the headlamp deal, but there's still, you know, every year, um, like the other day, I was looking for just my wind checker, not super important for antelope hunting, but I was looking for that and I was like, I know I have three or four of these things from last season. I have no idea where it went. So yeah, I just keep mine never leaves my bino harness. Yeah. That's where mine usually is, but it's not there. <laughs> well, well, if you don't have anything else, Oh, maybe I should just have everyone send me their favorite like elk um, point. Like all you have to do is just send me, share me your, your best elk hunting spot <laughs> and spot. you'll be entered. Yeah, you, so. you can pass those on over here and then. Yeah. yeah, we'll just do that. It'll be a party. We'll all get to hang out. It'll be good. It'll be a fun time. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if you don't have anything else, man, I think we'll close her out. And uh, hopefully we gave some people some information they wanted and, and uh, maybe do a follow up episode if we get any questions on it down the road after season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time today, man. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, good luck this season. And yeah, we'll, we'll stay in touch. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Awesome. Thanks. Alrighty, y'all. Well, there you have it. Uh, don't hesitate to go get that Onyx subscription if you don't already have it. If you want to wait and risk it, you might be the winner of the giveaway. Remember, you just are going to like the post that I share, uh, be following the Bowhike podcast, be following Onyx Maps uh, for your one entry, subscribe to the podcast, boom, bonus entry. If you're already subscribed, you already got that bonus entry. And then uh, leave a review with a comment, boom, another bonus entry. So you, you could have three entries and get yourself a chance to win uh, one of a couple of these sweet premium memberships for Onyx. So guys, until next week, thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.